In this video, we will study about the process of the DNA replication. In part 1 of this video, we discussed in detail about the overview of DNA replication, the concept of directionality of DNA in DNA replication, and also about the various replication enzymes that are involved in the process. Now in part 2 of this video, we will study in detail about the process of DNA replication. Now for the process of DNA replication to begin, it is important for the two strands of the DNA to open up. This job is done by the enzyme helicase which is also known as the unzipping enzyme. The enzyme helicase performs this function by acting on the hydrogen bonds which are present between the base pairs of the opposite DNA strands. The helicase breaks these hydrogen bonds due to which the double helix opens up leading to the creation of the structure known as replication fork. This exposes a sequence of DNA base pairs upon which many enzymes will subsequently act. Now the process of unzipping of DNA involves action of multiple helicase enzymes on different segments of DNA. These segments of DNA where the enzyme helicase acts are also known as the sites of origin. Now since the helicase acts on the DNA at multiple sites, multiple replication forks are created upon which the process of DNA replication will proceed. Now to prevent the two separated strands of DNA from joining together, a special type of protein known as the single-stranded binding protein holds the two strands of the DNA apart. Now, according to the concepts of directionality we learned in part 1 of this video, let's suppose this is the 3' prime end of the upper strand and this is the 5' prime end of the upper strand. And similarly, we have the 3' prime end of the lower strand in this direction and 5' prime end in this direction. Now the main enzyme, the DNA polymerase, which has the job of formation of new strands of DNA, can only form a strand from the 5' prime to the 3' prime direction. Now since the upper daughter strand of this DNA is running from the 3' prime to 5' prime direction, the DNA polymerase can easily form the replicated opposite strand from the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. And since the helicase is also unzipping the DNA in the same direction, the DNA polymerase can form the new strand continuously. But when we look at the opposite strand of DNA which is running in the opposite direction, things are very different. Since the DNA polymerase has to act, it has to form the new strand in this direction, which is in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. But since the helicase is opening the DNA helix in the opposite direction, the DNA polymerase cannot synthesize the new strand continuously. Well, this problem is solved by formation of the new strand of DNA in short segments known as the Okazaki fragments. These fragments are later joined by a different enzyme to produce one continuous strand. Due to this reason, the opposite strand is known as the lagging strand and the replication on the lagging strand is discontinuous replication as compared to the continuous replication on the leading strand. Now we will take the leading and the lagging strand separately and understand the process of DNA replication further. So after the formation of the replication fork, the next important step is the process of formation of RNA primer. Now what happens is that the DNA polymerase enzyme can only add new nucleotides to the 3' prime end of the existing nucleotide strand, which basically means that the DNA polymerase cannot start synthesizing new DNA out of nowhere and basically requires a short segment of nucleotides so that it can add new nucleotides at the 3' prime end of this sequence to form the new DNA. This problem is solved by the enzyme RNA primase. The primase makes an RNA primer which is a short stretch of nucleic acids complementary to the template that provides the 3' prime end for the DNA polymerase to work on. So now we have a leading strand of DNA which is running from the 3' prime to the 5' prime direction and we already have the short primer synthesized by the enzyme primase. Now it is a turn of the enzyme DNA polymerase to do its job and a few important points that you should know about DNA polymerase are that it always requires a primer to work with which is a short sequence of nucleotides and it cannot start synthesizing the new DNA from scratch. The DNA polymerase can only add new nucleotides at the 3' prime end of the DNA and can only synthesize the new DNA in one direction. And also the DNA polymerase requires energy for polymerization reactions that it gets from the nucleotides itself. Now once the primer is synthesized, the DNA polymerase can perform the vital function of elongation of DNA strand by addition of new nucleotides to the 3' prime end of the growing chain. The DNA polymerase uses the deoxyribonucleotides which contain either of the four bases, the adenine, cytosine, guanine or thymine. 
The DNA polymerase adds these nucleotides one by one to the three prime end of the new DNA strand. Now since the enzyme helicase is opening the DNA helix in the same direction, the DNA polymerase can synthesize a long chain of new DNA before separating and this is known as the continuous synthesis on the leading strand. The DNA polymerase also requires energy for this polymerization reaction which it basically gets from breaking the phosphate bonds present between the triphosphates of the deoxyribonucleotides. These phosphate bonds are high energy bonds which when broken provide the energy for this polymerization reaction. Now we will take a look at the lagging strand which runs from the 5' prime to the 3' prime direction. We can see that the main problem on this strand is that the DNA helix is being opened up in the opposite direction of the direction in which the DNA polymerase synthesizes the new DNA which is from the 5' prime to the 3' prime direction. Now this problem is solved by formation of new DNA in short segments known as the Okazaki fragments. What happens is that on the lagging strand, the primase synthesizes a short piece of primer and then the DNA polymerase synthesizes a short segment of DNA and then separates from the growing end. After this, the enzyme helicase would have opened up more of the DNA helix in this direction. Then again, the enzyme primase synthesizes a new primer further up on the DNA, which is followed by formation of another short segment of DNA. This process is repeated multiple times, thus known as the discontinuous DNA synthesis. Now, after the DNA polymerase has done its job, the newly synthesized DNA looks something like this. It has short segments of DNA with interrupting segments consisting of RNA primer. After this, another enzyme known as the exonuclease comes into play which removes these short segments of primers which are then replaced by short new segments of DNA by another type of DNA polymerase. After this, the enzyme DNA ligase seals or joins the DNA fragments to produce a continuous DNA strand even on the lagging strand. Lastly, it is also important to check for errors in the newly synthesized DNA and this is done by another type of DNA polymerase which proofreads the newly synthesized DNA for any wrong bases that may have been inserted and if it founds a wrong base or sequence, it removes the base and then replaces it with a correct one. After the process of DNA replication is completed, the two newly synthesized DNA molecules coil up again into the DNA helix model. So this was a brief overview about the process of DNA replication. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And for all the flashcards and upcoming notifications, follow us on Facebook in the link in the description below. If you want to connect to me personally, you can follow me on Instagram at Lost in the Nords if you are interested in travel and landscape photography as well.